ERM entails solution of an optimization problem. A stochastic gradient descent, or SGD, is the customary method used for the minimization of the empirical risk. The minimization problem associated with the training of an estimator is shown here in its parametric form, where the range of possible functions phi is spanned by a parameter h. Our goal is to find the optimal parameter h star. In our discussions here, it is convenient to define the average loss function capital L of H as the average of the pointwise loss functions. With this definition, the training problem is just the minimization of the loss function L of H. The function we want to minimize is an empirical risk, but its particular form is somewhat besides the point. It is just a minimization and minimizations can be carried out with a gradient descent algorithm. Gradient descent, not surprisingly, uses gradients. The property that gradients have that makes them useful in finding a minimum is that they are perpendicular to the level sets of the loss. Please notice the introduction of notation here. We use g of h to denote gradients of the loss l evaluated at parameter h. In this illustration, we have some level sets of a loss function, along with a gradient g of h, which is, as we have said, perpendicular to the level set. The gradient is the rate of change and points outwards of the level set. We depict the negative gradient, which points inwards. As a consequence of pointing inwards of the level set, the negative gradient points towards the minimum argument h star. Not directly, by the way, towards, kind of a rough driving direction. Mathematically, the angle between the negative gradient and the arrow h minus h star that points to the minimum is less than pi over 2. This is because the inner product of these two vectors, the negative gradient, and h minus h star, is positive. If the gradient points toward the minimum, we can use it in a gradient descent algorithm. We have an iteration index t and an associated parameter value ht. We evaluate the gradient g of ht associated with this parameter and scale it with a step size epsilon. We then update the parameter value to ht plus 1 by subtracting the scaled gradient from the current parameter value ht. Since the negative gradient points towards the minimum, ht plus 1 is closer to h star than ht was if the step size is sufficiently small. Formalizing these observations, we can prove that iterates ht converge to the optimum parameter h star, but we won't do that here. Up until now, we have been talking about L of h without considering its specific form. If we look at the particular form of the empirical cost, we see that the gradient of the average loss is an average of the gradients of the pointwise losses. Equipped with this specific gradient form, we can rewrite gradient descent for empirical risk as an iteration in which the parameter iterate ht is updated by subtracting the average of the pointwise losses. This is all good, but those gradients have turned out very costly to compute. They are an average of q pointwise gradients. Even if we have a relatively moderate number of data samples, it can take a lot of computation to evaluate. To avoid this cost, we use a stochastic gradient descent. At iteration t, we select a batch of QT samples from the training set. This batch, which we will denote as T sub T, is drawn randomly from the data set and is such that the number of samples it contains 
is much smaller than the number of samples Q in the training set. We now define the stochastic gradient hat G as an average of pointwise gradients over the batch set. This is misleadingly similar to the regular gradient. The only difference is the set over which we sum pointwise gradients. But the sets over which we sum are very different. The gradient set has all of the Q samples. The stochastic gradient set has a batch of QT samples, which are much smaller in number and chosen at random from the training set. Setting aside these differences for a second, we can think of replacing stochastic gradients for the gradients used in gradient descent. Doing that yields the stochastic gradient descent algorithm. Updates of parameters follow the stochastic gradient hat G, or, equivalently, they follow the average of the pointwise gradients over the batch set. SGD is cheaper to implement because the average is over a smaller number of pointwise gradients, and it is not difficult to see that it will retain the descent property of gradients in some form. The reason why stochastic gradients keep the descent property, in a sense, is that the expected value of the stochastic gradient with respect to the random choice of batches is a gradient. Here we have again our illustrative function with its level sets and its minimum argument h star. We know that gradients point inwards of the level set and therefore in the rough direction of the minimum. Stochastic gradients are random. Depending on the batch draw, it may be that they point inwards or it may be that they point outwards. But more often than not, the stochastic gradient points in the right direction. This has to be the case for the expectation to be a gradient. We signify this on the figure with the heat map of stochastic gradients having more mass around the gradient than in the opposite direction. Now, if stochastic gradients point in the right direction on average, it means that we move towards the optimum more often than not. If you want to be more formal about it, the expected angle between the stochastic gradient and the arrow with a head at the optimum is acute on expectation. And if you wanted to be completely formal, you would use the angle equation to build a soft martingale and prove conversions. This is not difficult, but since this is not a class on optimization, I will not bother you with the details.